Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. But today we have a guest host, Mary Ellen McGonigal of Simpler Trading, longtime Stock Charts contributor, really knows stocks and charts particularly well. She'll be taking you through latest update in the markets. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. And welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here filling in for the day. I just want to say welcome to The Final Bar bar. Lots to cover. It's been a very interesting day in the markets. And boy, what a difference one day makes. We're going to review just what took place today, what drove price action in the markets today, and what that may mean going forward. So let's go ahead and begin here with a view of the S&P 500. We're looking at a daily price chart. And you can see we had this bit of a reversal take place today. We started the markets today with a nice rally in response to strong GDP data. It came in at about 2.4%. The markets were looking for 2%. Nice, strong economy as the inflation data is beginning to recede. So we did start on a very positive note. However, into the last two hours of the close, we did get a pretty sharp pullback. And it was all about the Bank of Japan, the possibility that they may be shifting their monetary policy. They've had a unique policy where their shorter term rates were down below zero, and they capped their long-term rates at 0.5%. And they are looking to potentially shift that, that. And I'll share with you how that rippled through the markets but at the end of the day, we are looking at the S&P 500 remaining in a nice confirmed uptrend. We have the RSI up here in positive territory, as well as this MACD. A couple of areas of note, if we do continue to see any kind of a pullback, is that your next area of possible support on this S&P 500 is that 21-day simple moving average. That's this pink line here. And then we get into a bit of a broader, heavier possible area of support here at that 4450 level. But again, at this point, we are still in good standing relative to the broader markets. But let's take a look at some other activity that took place today in response to that news about the Bank of Japan. One item that we did see, and actually this took shape even prior to that news, is an uptick in interest rates. So we're looking here at the yield on the 10-year treasury. It did bump up to that 4% level. And this is a key level for the broader markets. It's one of those trigger points that oftentimes when we get up to that 4% level, and you can see we did get up beyond that here, certainly back in March, as yields were beginning to tick up, we did experience a pullback. For the most part, higher interest rates are particularly damaging or they can be to growth stocks. So this is one area that you will want to keep an eye on. And as we go ahead and move through, I'll share with you a couple of other areas that were on the move a bit today. Here we are with the US dollar. It did tick up about 1% today. We had see the we were seeing the dollar pull back a bit, which was good for some of these commodity related gold and silver stocks, but they did pull back today with that uptick in the US dollar. So net net, we did see broader economic data pushing the markets, but even more impactful, certainly on a stock by stock basis, was earnings reports. And what I did want to share with you is the fact that we did get some very critical earnings reports overnight. First up, we're looking at Meta Platform. They came out with very good numbers. The stock gapped up. Super good news there. But the news was not universally good. What we were seeing also among the broader markets was a deterioration among stocks, even if they did come in with good numbers. So I have a couple of examples that I can share with you as it relates to companies that came in with good reports. Uh, eBay, just as an example, we can take a look at this big gap down today. This was all about the company guiding for softer growth going forward. This is not what investors want to hear. And you can see they took the stock down 10 and a half 
percent. Other examples where companies pulled back despite coming in with good numbers, Edward Life Sciences, EW, and this is a big drop here in that particular name as well. And what I did want to point out as it relates to investors' response to earnings, when you are in the throes, and I've been through many earnings cycles, when you see investors unable to look away or to pay, not pay close attention to less than perfect earnings, oftentimes that can be a shift in investor sentiment. Now, we are still just getting into week three of earnings season, but it's something certainly that I'm going to be taking a very close look at because investor sentiment, of course, is quite critical to keeping the markets afloat. Now, beyond this, I did want to share with you a view of the S&P 500, and we'll take a quick look here at the equal weighted S&P. And this actually is somewhat good news. Uh, here we are with a daily chart. I'm going to pull up a weekly chart. In essence, it is reducing the impact of those mega cap names. And we can see by and large on this weekly that we are trending up quite nicely on that equal weighted. So in other words, we are seeing a continued broadening out in the broader markets. I'll go ahead and share with you where that's shaping up and why. And then from there, we can take a look at individual stocks within the broader markets that are really looking quite attractive relative to some of these tech names that are quite stretched. So let's take a look at price action today on this view using stockcharts.com. And you can see down here in this lower quartile, your worst performing sectors were recently strong areas, financials, utilities, and real estate, which had been up at the forefront. Good news with technology down only about 0.3% and a lot to do with earnings related news. So from here, I'm going to pivot and share with you a view of the semiconductor index. We're going to get a little bit more into this as we move forward, but taking a look at two companies that released their earnings after the close yesterday, this is STM. Take a look at this gap up into a base breakout, nice positive momentum shift there. One other company that did report after the close, LAM Research, LRCX, gap up into a base breakout. And again, I'll share with you what focus those particular companies have that is helping to keep that semiconductor area among the technology sector in a nice uptrend. So that's it for the market recap today. Again, you are going to want to keep an eye on those interest rates. Make sure that we don't get too much above that 4% level where it does impact particularly growth stocks. Also, earnings season having a very big impact as usual. However, I mentioned to you that sentiment does appear to be shifting. Confidence among broader market investors is going to be evidenced by them kind of looking away when the news is not always 100% great. We are not seeing that. We're seeing stocks really getting hit quite hard on the slightest nuance relative to either future earnings or coming in a little bit below estimates. Of course, you also will want to keep a little bit of an eye on that US dollar for those of you that are in some of these commodity related names. We did see that uptick. And then of course, all eyes will be naturally on this Bank of Japan that seemingly did move the markets. I did point out to you areas of support to be on the lookout for, but at this point in time, we remain in a nice confirmed uptrend. Hey, thanks so much for that market update. Couple quick comments before we continue today's show. First off, we welcome your questions. I'm going to be back soon and I would love to answer your question in our next mailbag segment. You can reach us via email, thefinalbar at stockcharts.com. On Twitter, just tag us in a comment at finalbarsctv. And on our YouTube channel, just drop a comment below the video that you're watching. We'd love to hear from you, especially your feedback on the show, but definitely your questions. We'd love to answer your question live on the air in our next mailbag segment. Also, we have a pretty serious special happening right now at StockCharts.com. If you have never been a premium paid member of StockCharts, now is the time to do it. We have a flash sale going on in the month of July. You can go to StockCharts.com special. Some of the most powerful features 
of the stock charts platform are reserved for our paid members. Things like our scanning engine, which allows you to identify stocks and ETFs on the move. Our uh, chart list feature, which really allows you to capture the names and the charts that are most important to you. And our ACP platform, our advanced charting solutions, which really is a dynamic way of understanding market dynamics. Stockcharts.com slash special for all the information on that summer sale happening in the month of July. And now we go back to your guest host, Mary Ellen McGonigal. So from here, let's go ahead and pivot and I'll share with you some other action, kind of zoom out a little and tell you what I'm seeing here in the broader markets. First up here, I am going to share with you a view of a particular uh, service. It's called Novice Novel Investor. I don't use this service particularly, but it is super helpful in identifying sector performance and potential rotation. So we are going back with this view to 2008. And what this particular view shows you is the top performers on any given year. So quite quickly, I'm going to share with you last year's top performers and also year-to-date performers up for this year. So here we are with these top performer from last year, and you can see that it was energy stocks. We did see a number of energy companies perform. Occidental was a top performer among others last year. So that you can see on that year-to-date column on the far right, that year-to-date this year, it was an underperformer. Moving down to 2022, taking a look at utility, it was a tough year all around, but utilities did eke out again last year. And you can see underperformer, bottom performer year to date. Next up is consumer staples, and they were mostly flat, a little positive, but also relatively underperforming. But I do want to share with you, healthcare was up at the forefront last year and an underperformer. So you can see that these particular areas that energy we talked about, utilities, and healthcare, for those of you that follow the market super closely, you'll know that they have been on the move higher. That's all about that equal weighted S&P that I shared with you earlier. Now, let's go down, take a look at some of these bottom performers from 2022. First up is communication services, and this is going to be Meta, Google, Netflix, and those names were down 40% last year. Take a look. Year to date, they're up 36%, almost recapturing all of last year's gains. Also here at the bottom performers last year was consumer discretionary. And you can see they were down 37% last year, up 33%. That's going to be a lot by way of Tesla, Amazon, and any number of consumer facing areas. And last up here is information technology, really deep underperformer last year up at the forefront this year. Now, the point of that view is that we have seen a lot in the way of retracement with these underperformers from 2022, very close to regaining most of last year's losses. The point here is that a number of these areas may be getting a bit stretched and do a pause. Now, from there, what I do want to share with you is some of those areas that are underperforming year to date here and share with you ways that you can get in front of what appear to be a rotation into some of last year's uh, or this year's underperformers. So first up, what I am going to do is share with you a view of XLE. Now, this is the broader energy sector. We're looking at a daily price chart view. And you can see that we've been in a nice uptrend here of late. The sector has nice positive momentum characteristics here, and we are coming off of the lows from early July. But the good news is that we've been seeing higher lows June into July. Very good news there relative to a potential continuation rally. So with energy, let's take a look at some of the drivers of energy. And certainly first up will be the price of oil. So we're going to take a look at Brent crude oil this week. It is getting up above that 82 level. And I'll go ahead and 
pull this uh, blow this up a little bit. And you'll see relative to earlier in this year, we are approaching potentially new near-term highs. Now, also with energy, you will want to do a bit more of a deeper dive because it's also going to have a lot to do with supply and demand components with oil. And at this point in time, we've seen reduced output in oil, and it's coming amid surprisingly strong demand. So that is one of the other drivers that you will want to keep in mind when looking at energy. So from here, let's go ahead and use stock charts and see if we can get in front of those names that are poised within energy to fare well. So we're going to take a look at this sector summary. From here, go down into the energy sector fund, and you will see the various sub-industry groupings. Now, interesting, of course, but from my work, you will want to look at this stock charts technical rating. Where is that strength among these energy sub-industry groups? Because that's where you will want to participate. So here we are with that stock charts technical rating, and up here at the forefront are oil, equipment, and services stocks. The exploration and production, that's going to be your Exxon, Devons of the world. They're kind of middling, muddling along, but certainly the strength has been in this equipment and service space. So from here, I'm going to click on and take a look at the underlying stocks within this group. Again, that stock charts, technical rating. And the reason I use this is because I do quite a bit of screening outside of stock charts. And when I come over and look at this view, the names that I've chosen that look quite attractive are up here at the forefront. So it's a wonderful shortcut as it relates to potentially getting in front of names in a strong group that are exhibiting strong characteristics. That technical rating, if you're not familiar, it is going to put you in front of stocks where their chart is technically quite sound. So from here, my work, I do tend to favor larger cap names. So what I'm going to do from here is go ahead and pull up that large cap view. We're not seeing a whole lot of names, but I will walk you through some of these companies that are up here at the forefront with their stock charts rating. So first up is Baker Hughes. And what I'm going to point out is a commonality among these names in this strong industry group that are exhibiting a positive chart. First up here is Baker Hughes. BKR is the ticker symbol. We can go ahead and pull up that full quote. You will want to get full information from, I view it as being quite critical. Take a look. You have a nice 2% yield that the stock does provide, and it's in a nice confirmed uptrend. So that is one name for consideration. I'll take a moment here and mark this up. And from here, what I'm going to do is share with you a commonality among these names that are outperforming here. So, oh, well, my drawing skills, oh, still getting a second chance here. So we can see that the stock more recently has broken out of this multi-month base, nice high volume characteristics into an uptrend. We're going to pay attention today. It did pull back, but net net looking quite constructive. From here, let's go ahead and take a look at another name in this grouping here that is looking constructive and Schlumberger up here at the forefront in this equipment space, taking a look at the chart. Schlumberger did report their earnings and the stock also exhibiting this nice base breakout into a period of consolidation. So sitting up there quite nicely, we're going to go ahead and pull up that full quote again, give you a little more by way of information, a little bit of a 1.5% yield. And last up, I will share with you two other names that were also up there at that forefront with that stock charts technical rating. First up is Weatherford International, WFRD, nice base breakout into an uptrend, nice high volume on your rally days, positive momentum. And then last up is CCJ. And what I did want to point out to you, this is a bit of a smaller company, and actually it's showing up in a different sub-industry group, so we'll just stick with the three that I did share with you. And when you are looking for strong names, or certainly they have 
are exhibiting constructive charts within an industry group. And in this case, we're looking at a sector that is potentially reversing its downtrend, entering a new uptrend. I combined fundamentals with those technicals. I want to know what is driving that stock price higher. So the commonality among those three, three energy names that I've shared with you is that each of them are considered energy technology companies. Now, what they are aiming to do is help these exploration and production companies become more efficient. And it's all about providing what are called cleaner solutions, reducing their carbon footprint, and then also providing waste reduction. Each of these companies does exactly that. They are viewing themselves as energy innovators and very much a strong global technology talking about a balanced planet. So that is one thing that I did want to share with you. And then also let's go ahead and go back, take a look at semiconductor stocks. And we can do this same exercise here, technology, and take a look up here with this stock charts technical rating, no big surprise, but we can see semiconductor names. From here, this stock charts technical rating again, and I don't think I need to go through and look at each chart, but I did want to point out to you that these top performers here, NVIDIA, of course, a monster. This has been on my MEM Edge report since January. It's up over 150%. But as we drill down, take a look at uh, ACLS, ABGO, Broadcom, LAM Research, AEHR. Each of these companies is involved in AI. That is very critical. Certainly, we are seeing a broad-based adoption of AI technology. And these tech, uh, semiconductor companies either provide chips or they provide equipment to these chip manufacturers, all relate, relative to that AI. One last area that we can also see within semis that's experiencing strength is, for instance, ON Semiconductor. Let's go ahead and pull up this chart. And this particular stock is very much instrumental relative to electric vehicles. So EV is another theme among that semiconductor group. So in other words, when you are looking to participate in a group that's either already very strong, such as semiconductors, or a group that's just coming into favor, I find it to be super helpful to not only know that their chart is looking quite constructive, but also what is that driver? Is there a commonality among these leading stocks that will help continue to propel those stocks higher over the long term? I'm going to leave it there, everyone. Take a look for me tomorrow with my Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. Until then, take care.